Okay, my talk is going to turn out to be in some ways uh, the prequel uh, to Ryan's. A lot of the developments in the 18th century that he was talking about uh, really assume uh, some of the things I'll be talking about uh, with respect to, uh, to the Bible. Okay, so two objectives basically in my project, which focuses on Bible, on the Bible, and on biblical interpretation. Um, a kind of substantive objective and a methodological one. So first of all, to understand how wisdom is conceptualized in the Bible, and then by key biblical interpreters. Uh, and then secondly, to ask a question that I think is particularly relevant here, the methodological one, what is the relationship between reading texts, looking at texts, a collective text, and the pursuit of wisdom? Uh, so it's those two things that I want to talk about uh, today. Um, okay. My thing's a little off, so uh, bear with me. But um, to, uh, to get going, I, I want to uh, point out a, a conceptual tool that I've been using and that I'm borrowing uh, from the work of, of the philosopher Charles Taylor uh, when he talks about frameworks. Uh, so when Taylor talks about frameworks, he's referring to a kind of unconscious, overarching set of metaphysical uh, and moral judgments that guide action and belief, right? So these are just sort of these large, uh, mostly unconscious, um, it's a kind of a network of beliefs that we have uh, that, uh, that guide us. Um, as he says himself, uh, and this is not quoting from Taylor, it belongs to human agency to exist in a space of questions about strongly valued goods. So it uh, really connects it to, uh, to uh, human nature itself to operate according to these sort of submerged frameworks of belief. So basically, I, I take that and um, that concept and I apply it to wisdom and ask the question, what are the frameworks, the kind of submerged sets of belief that are necessary for conceptualizing wisdom, number one, in the Bible, among the biblical writers, and then secondarily among the biblical interpreters. So I'll be using this word framework um, to get at the question of what wisdom is. Okay. Okay, so the first, uh, I'll just throw this all up here even. It's kind of Sorry, things are a little off here. but. Um, so reading the Bible, and I, it took me a while to put this part together, but reading through various parts of the Bible, what I try to do uh, is to tease out uh, a framework for wisdom that sort of cuts across the biblical canon as a whole. Um, being trained as an historical critic, this, is, this was a little bit somewhat anathema for me to do this, but uh, I felt that it was uh, congenial really to this project. So um, in doing that, I came up with the following. Um, Wisdom in the Bible turns out not to be a personal quality at all, at all uh, which might be a little bit surprising for those of us who think about the Bible and religion and, and, and um, spirituality and that sort of thing. Uh, it turns out really not to be a personal quality at all. Uh, so I'm really interested in the kind of discussion we've been having about group versus individual today. Um, rather, it is a communal and, and dynamic body of knowledge aimed at the preservation of life in a divinely ordered cosmos. So it's a communal and dynamic body of knowledge aimed at the preservation of life. And by that I mean we have a community, we want it to endure for the, the next generation and the one after that, and so whatever contributes to that goal is going to be part of what we consider wise or, or wisdom. So uh, that's the definition of wisdom that I'm, I'm drawing out of the Bible. Um, so it's the preservation of life within a divinely ordered cosmos. And that cosmos has really two sectors, if you will, uh, what we might think of as sacred order, the relationship of humanity to God, and then social order, the relationship of human beings to one another. Uh, and so really the key thing in the Bible is to keep those things together as much as possible, right? To be properly aligned with respect to God and to a kind of larger metaphysical realities, and as a, as a correlate to that, to be rightly related to, uh, to people in your community. Um, okay, and some of those values with respect to sacred order, the key value there would be loyalty. With respect to social order, the correct value, the key value would be justice. And the kind of overarching value that characterizes a wise society is peace. Okay, so that's sort of my look at the Bible itself. And then what I did was to look at key biblical interpreters to see how, um, how they sort of created wisdom frameworks of their own based on the Bible. And I looked at Jewish interpreters who I put on this side because Jewish interpreters, uh, interpretation is really keyed to the special status of Israel as the chosen people of God, and then the centrality of the commandments in structuring life. So uh, attuned in this scheme to sacred order in particular. Uh, looking at Thomas Aquinas as a representative of Catholic theology, uh, 
drawing heavily from Greek categories, frames wisdom as contemplation of cosmic order, which is prepared for through, uh, through virtue. Um, but that's why I put him at the top, because of his attention to cosmic order. And then looking at John Calvin as representative Protestant theology, um, this was a very hard chapter because Calvin doesn't really have a constructive uh, definition of wisdom. In some ways, it's an anti-wisdom, but I, don't, I can't go into that now. But I put him on the right because what you have coming out of the Calvinist traditions is a heavy focus on social discipline and social order. And those of you who work on early modern political theory, you know, know, know what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, and then finally, trying to ask the methodological question. What is the relationship between all of this stuff um, to the methodological question of how wisdom is related to the study of texts. Um, one point to make, I think, here is that texts are not inert repositories of knowledge. Okay, they're a little bit more than that. Um, texts are articulate frameworks uh, that are inhabited by communities. Uh, so texts are the means by which communities understand their identities. They understand their identities within a textually inscribed universe such that wisdom uh, is a property of the system. It's communally owned and it's a property of the larger project. And I think texts, and I won't go into all these now, um, but anyway, uh, really bring forward that character of wisdom as oriented toward the preservation of life and as something communal uh, and embodied in, a, in, in, in something that's shared by the community. Uh, okay, I better leave it there. Thank you.